this video it is going to be about the different packaging of Marvel Legends from the past to being Toy Biz to the present on Hasbro and comparing it the pros and the cons and just general thoughts about it from back in the Toy Biz days and the left this is the last carded figure I have of that era of uh, action figures and that's a double and the present an extra cable figure I have so back in the day the early 2000s when the Marvel Legends line started on the Toy Biz this for their whole series was the packaging they used but they had spin-off lines like the Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, the Hulk and they were the clamshell but on a cardboard back and you just ripped it off the cardboard so they were like sub spin-off lines but they fit in scale and were basically Marvel Legends so but if we're talking the actual Marvel Legends line themselves it was this throughout the whole line so let's just move this out of the way for a bit before we're talking that and this was what was referred to as the clamshell packaging for the figure where the one thing that's really unique is compared to Hasbro this packaging costs probably more money to manufacture because it's all plastic this the front the sides the back there is a card here but that cardboard is encased in the clamshell so the whole thing is clamshell packaging and what's really good about this is even though it doesn't let in any air because there's no holes on the side which I guess preserves the freshness of it you can tell no one can really open this up the way it's sealed this is permanently closed and you really can't fake it in terms of taking the figure out or putting it in again so if you buy it like this and it's sealed you pretty much know no one has opened it and this figure is mint in terms of the figure itself even years later it does a real good bonus and you know let's check it out don't forget back in the day these were about $7.99 and $8.99 and what it had was it came with the figure any accessories they had was number two had a builder figure part number three or it had a base also sometimes so they had a stand base this one got the glider so that takes the place of the stand number four has a comic book number five and sometimes they even had a trading card which never really caught on number six all of that for let's figure 899 right and you can see the comic book in the back here and they were good comic books they were printed on good material and it was full issues usually and they would run some house ads for future lines it shows you to build a figure part highlighted here it tells you the articulation points something that they don't do now in the packaging and it tells you the series here usually in the corner And the back was pretty cool because they showed you all the figures in the line, a little story, and the bio. The bio thing with the power stats never really caught on. Never really a comic book thing that was good. So, you know, there was that. And check that out. The Toy Biz logo. Uh, and also there was differences because figures were bigger or smaller so the card in the front might have been different sizes and the same with the top it was not a uniform even though the design was there it was not across the board that everyone fit in the same exact packaging so there were differences and at the height of its power they had figures like the Hulkbuster Iron Man and uh, the very big beetle version from the spider-man line 
that fit and was sold for like eight ninety nine, which would be a builder figure in today's Hasbro st standards. So they had some really huge figures that took a lot of plastic and uh, were selling relatively cheap. And so, you know, and it was funny, even back then I thought, hey, that's kind of a lot of money, close to 10 bucks for a figure. But when you look back on it, it was like, no, that was a, a fantastic deal. And you can see, one thing also was sometimes they had these bands, the ties, and sometimes it was like a clear rubber band. But if you took it out years later, it would just break and crumble easily due to years of being in storage like that. That's one thing I noticed. Also, if you keep it in the sunlight, probably colors will fade in terms of long term uh, if you did that. One thing that is kind of also noticeable is... You can see the figure on the side usually, or the bottom here, but it was usually covered up a bit by the logo, unfortunately. Like the logo would cover up part of seeing the whole figure, or stickers would get in the way. And so this is the clam shell packaging for Toy Biz. Moving on to the Hasbro design. There have been a few Hasbro designs over the years, but I think this is the first real winner in terms of Hasbro perfecting their product and getting their best packaging. As you could tell compared to Toy Biz, the Hasbro packaging I've noticed is usually about the same size in terms of a very uniform look, in terms of the outer packaging, the size, and the overall design, it is just about the same in terms of all of their figures. Whether the figure is big or small, you could see in this case, cable takes up a lot of room on the card. Plus, you could see it has a builder figure part, and it has his accessories. So that's a big figure in this case, accessories, builder figure part. Does not have a uh, stand like in the old days, a clear stand. They don't have that. And it doesn't have a comic book or any other accessory things like that. Usually they have the logo here. One nice addition that they've done is usually unique card art here. And if two figures share one card, like Switch figures, they might have card art here on one character and a second card art here. And a little logo here. And not only do they have to give a little bio in different languages, this is new is that they put a picture of the figure in sort of a dynamic pose and they tell you the characters even if they don't give a full body shot you see the faces and which parts have the builder figure it's nice because originally toy biz and hasbro would give a little paper insert telling you how to put the figure together and that little paper insert just was, I guess, more manufacturing to do that, where it's just simpler, just pointed out on the back of the card. I thought that was a fantastic idea to do it like that. This is all the copyrights and logos and things. One thing is, though, with this packaging, is it's very easy not to get a mint figure, or maybe the guy opened it if you buy it years later, because originally there was no tape, and in the back, there's just a very cheap tape that if you're careful, you could take the tape off and use new tape or reseal it and take the figure out. That's good for those who want to take the figure out to display and at one day put it back in to the packaging. Whereas on the Toy Biz, you cannot take it out just to look at it and put it back. Here you could, but it, years later, how do you know it's truly mint and unopened? Plus, the air could get in on the sides here, even slowly, so the air quality might leak or affect the figure somehow long term. And you have the Hasbro logo there. That's the Marvel Legends series. Some people like this logo, and others might like the classic logo. 
I didn't like the logos Hasbro was using the first few years that they had the line. It wasn't as good as this one, but this is the best logo they've made, and it's a really good logo. So they got that right finally after years of experimenting. And with the Hasbro stuff, it's $19.99. So it went up originally to $14.99 from about $9.99. And then now it's settled on about $19.99 before taxes. So basically a little more than double of this. Also, these could be crushed in terms of the plastic where there's crushed damage you'll find. But when this figure is crushed in the packaging, usually the figure is not harmed or not too much because the crushed clamshell takes most of the impact of what is going on. But with this, the card, the cardboard could easily get damaged and all over here crease. And maybe the figure gets a little chance more of getting damaged due to the packaging design, where this is, I guess, more secure long term. But the cardboard here, again, it's probably cheaper to make. The card art is nice on the side. And this, it's a little more, I guess, saving space where they don't waste a lot of space taking up unnecessary room they compress it as tightly as possible to make a very efficient packaging and this i guess sometimes there was a little more space or wasting and they spent a lot more money on the packaging than this i would say and so that's the packaging for toy biz and for hasbro i think both of them have their pros and their cons. For long-term use, I guess I, overall, if you had to tell me which one do I like overall. And despite the card art, which is nice, and the back of the image, which is nice, I guess I prefer the Toy Biz one because you know it's more secure and the figure is totally mint. Even if the bubble could get damaged, the figure is in fantastic shape and you know it can never be opened because once it's opened it's pretty obvious and it was funny it was very hard to get those figures out back in the day you had to get a scissor you had to cut all around it it was it was a work to get that thing open this very easy to open and it is nice i think it's more efficient more compact it is the best packaging that hasbro's done and their best logo that they have made and I think the only thing is you'll never truly know if it's been opened or not if an expert put it back in the package. So that's very hard to tell in terms of future resale value down the line. But they're both nice. Both of them have their pros and cons. That's my final thoughts on it. Let me know what you think about this and uh, talk to you later.